Hi, this is Whiskey Fire Department. We are, well, I am interviewing my grandfather today. He is a World War II veteran. This is Robert Taylor. All right, Papa, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, well, we're gonna I'm start. I'm more nervous than I don't know I was doing the battle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> you shouldn't be, it's just me, your granddaughter. Um, first, we'll start with branch of service you are in. In the Navy. In the Navy. Um, what, were you in on a ship? What unit? Yeah, I, I was in the Navy and uh, I was on the cargo ships that delivered all the, all the materials for the battle of the North Atlantic. Oh, wow. To, to all over the nation. And uh, my run on my ship was to get supplies to mm -hmm. Ru Russia, which the Germans had them baffled and no, they ran out of food, planes, they ran out of everything. They were desperate for help. So you were the ones that delivered all the food to yes. Russia? I, I and many others. That mm. They had been, during that war, and there was 400 ships assigned to bring supplies to Russia. They needed it to turn the tide. Russia had run out of food, ammunition, planes, and had nothing to fight the war with, wow. including food. And they were desperate. And, they, and the Germans had done the same thing. They went so far north until they ran out of the supply line that hard freeze come and they were frozen and couldn't move. The Russians couldn't move, they had no supplies. And the convoy was, had every ship that had attempted to get there ahead of us, 350 of them never made it. Wow. Out of the fifth that left, the Admiral came aboard and told us any, any ship that got through, if only one ship got through, it would be a victory. Wow. Everything was aboard they needed. So it sailed, and to make a long story short, it was devastating. Mm -hmm. Night battles, day in, day in, day out, and then two, we finally got through with, out of, th out of 50, only 37 of us got there. Wow, and he and started with 400. It, it was 400 went ahead of me, and including then, the 50 I was in, but what? none of the 350 had made it, none, not the first one. So the Admiral said if one ship got through, it would be a success. We was this towards the, the end of the war or the beginning it, of the war? It, no, no, it was towards the end of the war. Wow. It was when uh, in, the war ended in, I forget anyway, but it was the last, it, it was the first full year of the war. In other words, the war started in fall, but it was the first year, and it was one year underway when I went to Russia. But that they, the Germans had already advanced so fast, they could, they fast as their tanks would run, they advanced because of mm -hmm. no opposition. But they, the cold weather froze them, couldn't move. So the Russians, the same token, they didn't have any, any food, any supply, not everybody was stalemated. So when we got through with the 37 ships, they had enough supplies, enough ammunition, enough everything to turn the war, turn the battle. Wow. And they, Cargo that I helped deliver going to battle for the Russians in that German day. Did you realize at that time the significant of you the significance of you delivering it? Were y'all aware? Very much sure. Yeah. I was just a young kid. I wasn't scared of danger. I didn't yeah. know what danger was. How old were you? I was seventeen. Oh my god! They let you join I, I, at seventeen? I, I couldn't. I, I never was seventeen. The war started in December mm. of forty-one, and I was. 17 in December, no, in March of 42. Wow. So I had to wait four months to join. And you were, you wanted to join. You I didn't did. Get I dressed. always wanted a sailor's uniform. Yeah. Is that why you wanted the sailors? Because it looked debonair? Yeah. <laughs> but That's once exactly you. exactly what I wanted. Well, once you started, you, after boot camp and all that, did you realize what you gotten yourself into? Oh, Are you proud absolute, of your. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They trained us for us. They mm -hmm. trained us how to shoot down planes, how to shoot a submarine out of the water, they trained us with ammunition. And, and I was trained as a gunner, mm -hmm. and I, I could fire any gun the Navy had, mm -hmm. any gun aboard that ship, I could wow. fire it. And I, and I was better at, at firing a machine gun than I was anything else, because my father taught me how to wing shoot. And wing shoot is mean you've got to determine the speed of your target and where to put the bullet. Wow, so he was training you for war and he didn't even know it. I, no, I, I certainly did. I yeah. helped win the war. Mm -hmm. you know. The Russians were so desperate for food when we got there, the, the harbor froze over as soon as we got in. And they were eating our garbage. Any garbage yeah. they ate. 
You don't hear about that. That's no, it, we never don't hear about nothing like that. But did you go of, out on the in, into Russia once you got yeah, there? Oh, yeah, oh yes, uh, being a like? young sailor, I yeah. wanted to get out and find female companionship, yeah. and and there were more female. There was no men. Yeah, on no, the ship. No, yeah, men, there was no, no men, men on the ship. They all back dead then. or fighting. Oh, but, oh, I see what you're saying. This is where you met Grandma. So you were willing, right? I was looking for female companionship, but I didn't Why find. Not a Russian? I didn't find Grandma there. I found her in New yeah. Orleans. <laughs> Which, yeah, New Orleans is but, awesome. But anyway, but yeah. it, that was the most awesome thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. I bet your young eyes never oh, seen oh, anything yes. like and, that. And the planes we shot down, we saw planes that the Russians had shot down. Yeah. And they were on the banks, and some of them even still burning after they shot them down. First thing I seen was a tire sticking up. And I heard the rumor with, we saw all the scrap metal of Japan, they were going to shoot it back at us. Well, the Russians were flying planes, and Germans were flying planes that had USA tires on them. Wow. Just taking a U.S. rubber tire on them. Get out, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I mean, I didn't know that. No, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that. No. So we were, uh, wow. So, um, so once you got onto Russian land, how long were y'all there before you uh, okay, headed back? Okay, okay. It, it took us, when we left, got, when we finally got through, and they had an aircraft carrier with us, mm -hmm. all the, Escorts left us, but the aircraft was stayed with us. They escorted us into the harbor, shooting down the German bombers that were after us. And when we got there, you had to wait for another convoy. Yeah. You couldn't go out by yourself. So it waited two months to get Wow. Out. So you were there for two months. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so did you ever see a German sh shoulder, um, soldier? Or did, did you get that I, close? I, or? I, so I had never realized I'd killed anybody. Yeah. I never realized I shot a plane down. Mm -hmm. I never thought about killing somebody. Yeah. But when I shot them planes down out of the sky, I was glad to see them tail spin and go. But I never realized I was killing people too. I could see that because it's you know it's a oh, distance and it's not right. you're not right. right in their right. in their face. Yeah. But I, I contributed all my success as being a machine gun shooter, and my father teaching me how to shoot, and he taught me how to wing shoot, which means. You have to learn how fast your prey is moving mm -hmm. and stay apart of it and how fast your bullets travel. So how many planes do you think you shot down? I have no idea, but we were under attack mm -hmm. for five or six days continuously, wow. and we ran out of ammunition. We ran out of ammunition from machine guns, and we had five, five Mitchell bombers on our ship, mm -hmm. and they were on the cargo deck, and they had the same machine guns. We broke into them and got the ammunition out of those planes. Oh, wow. And then the Russians want to know what happened to the planes. Mm -hmm. We told them termites got a hold of that bomber. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. But it was under attack. And when when we left, it, you know, in the seasons there, mm -hmm. sometimes all daylight, no dark. Yeah. Wintertime, it's all black and no sunset. But we were under attack 24-7 while we went because it was daylight. Well, um, so, so you went over there and you came back. How much longer were you in the Navy after that? Uh, oh, that was my first voyage. Yeah. And I made two more voyages after that. Mm -hmm. And meantime, though, uh, I was, we were all, survivors were all a commodity of the news. Everybody mm -hmm. wanted to talk to us. Yeah. So BBC took us and, and made a broadcast. And that let our people know we were still living, too. Mm -hmm. but they, they enjoyed hearing from us yeah they made a point to do that so that was my first ship and 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 out of the 37 that got there only 13 ships got back wow 100 million so um i have some questions now let's go back a little bit when you joined that so and then when you joined the navy you didn't get drafted the draft was going on correct correct but yeah, they were mandatory yeah mandatory but you went you signed up I yourself signed up. I think people also need to know my grandfather was 11 was the first of 11 kids he was the oldest they lived on a farm in Jacksonville sharecropper um, sharecropper yeah, share so they everything you ate really was from the farm if, if, if we didn't grow it shoot it or catch it we didn't have nothing to eat yeah so and uh they lived in a cabin it's a uh right the like uh, first home I can remember was a corn crib my mother was given a corn crib to live in. First thing she done was clean it out, clean the floors, and we did have a floor in the corn crib. 
keep the corn from going outside. And so my home that I can remember first home was a corn field. And that's crazy. I mean, to think about that now, it's like... I, the, I think about this now, and I give thanks that I got what I got. Absolutely. And so, yeah, he was the first. Um, the youngest, the same age as my mom. So, so my great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, no, great-grandmother, I mean, she was... She had a lot of kids to help out with that farm, and your grandpa, my great grandfather. We had 11 kids in our family, 11 children. 11 right? children. So and they've all done really well. A, a lady got back in those days was having children. Yep, that was that was the that, job. Uh, no, and that, that's what they enjoyed. Yep. Loving companionship. You know, and, and stayed family. Pregnant, stayed pregnant all the time. Yep, and it's about family, and that's how you were able to have that farm. Correct, was having the family you had do to it work together. It. You had, had to work help it. Work it. So. Because of that, I mean that you know you had to learn how to shoot, like you're saying the track. So that was good for you for the uh, the Navy going on the good Navy for ship. Everybody. everybody, yes. So how was basic training? Ba oh, basic training was murder. Yeah. And no liberty, no nothing, and so for the first, uh, it took two months training and, and no liberty. The first six weeks, no liberty. Last two weeks, we got liberty. They taught us how to shoot the guns and how to to sail the ships even. So uh, that was an awesome training. And we got target practice by planes pulling, pulling sleeves behind them, pulling okay. targets behind them, airborne. Oh, I didn't and know that. Like that. He was a brave pilot, because a lot of times we'd forget <laughs> the, where the target was at and creep up on the plane. Did you ever shoot down one of those planes by accident? I'm I, sure I, that's happened. I don't know whether yeah. I ever shot down a plane or not, but I fired at a British plane twice. I fired at a British submarine and I missed yeah. him, but I fired out a, a lot of ships that mm -hmm. I didn't know was neutral. If, if you come up on a ship sailing and nobody would recognize the signal you gave them, you'd mm -hmm. shoot him. Oh. And we did that too. We fired at ships that were friendly, but usually would establish some kind of contact. Well, these days, even with high tech technology, they still have friendly fire over. You know, friendly the fire world. killed yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, and I think it still happens today. So it's you're knowledgeable. Measure. You know what friendly fire is. Well, I like war movies and I like keeping up with the military today. I'm very respectful for anyone who serves in the military, especially ones that signed up on their own. You, you know, because it's. Yeah. I mean, that's what keeps America great. Yeah. The people like you, and the greatest also, generation. Also uh, decorated by two governments. I got the presidential citation from my government. And the red star from the Russian. I did not know you got the red star from the Russian. Yes, I did. And I could have went in and got it. And there, they, I could have went right to their ambassador in Washington and got the, got the mm -hmm. star, but I didn't want to go. I didn't want to talk about it, so I didn't go. But I got the recognition. When did you? When, when were you able to start talking about? When you first got back from the war, I didn't, want, it. I didn't want to hear about it. I didn't want to talk yeah. about it. And I, I'm still still hesitant about it. But yeah. the public needs to know. That's one reason. The historian needs to know. That's one reason why I'm doing this is because I realized I'm, someone needs to have your story because I was l searching the internet about asking you questions and there's so many um, really neat sites for me to ask. You know, they give you a whole thing how to um, interview a World War II veteran because they want to know for history because like some of the stuff you just told me I don't think, you know, was told yeah. or know about. No. And I wear my hat today, and mm -hmm. a lot of people come up and ask about Well, you're, there's not many of you left, no, so you're a That's major. exactly what my post-111 told me. Mm -hmm. They had a, they honored the veterans this Memorial Day, and there was only four of us there, World War II veterans. Mm -hmm. They come to me after and told me they wanted me to spend a lot more time with them because they don't have very many in World War II. Yeah, that's neat. But you two, you all have something in common, something huge and that is it's good for you guys. Another thing, I'm still mobile. I can yep. still dance. And I know. He does, go, he does go, he does tango dancing, what, twice a week, Grandpa? Once, twice? Two and three times. Two or three, three. Two or three times. Um, I do have another question because this was, I thought this was an interesting one to ask. Do you know, do you remember exactly where you were when Pearl Harbor was hit? Yes. I remember what I was doing, where mm -hmm. I was at, and, and who was with me. Yeah. And it was my aunt, uh, uh, my mother's youngest sister. I was at her home because mm -hmm. they had a little more money than we did and had a little bit of it. And so I was I always anxious to go there, better food, better than And she lived up close to the town. And I was rolling around on the front yard where my cousin was going to 
listen to any music outside and then they interrupted and told us about Pearl Harbor. It was devastating and shocking. And that's all we thought about was going in and joining up, but none of us were of age. Yeah. And that when you were 17 then when that happened? No, oh. I was uh, 16. 16, okay. In December I was 16. Yeah. And then uh, March. That's of right, because 17, 17 is when 17. you. And you and how was the, how was you know was it, how was everyone feeling after that? I mean I mean I'm a, I'm assuming I know, but because you were there, was it did it just change how people felt about everybody. the war? I mean the war was going on before it, we got in it. It was devastating to everybody. Yeah. But but you, we were in a severe depression when mm -hmm. that thing hit, so everybody yeah. was very poor. But uh, it hadn't been for the World War Two. The United States would still be in a depression. Yeah. When they went to manufacturing goods for the, the armies, the navies, then they developed machinery, equipment, and office buildings and warehouses and manufacturing plants that yeah. would bring us out of the depression. Yeah, and they put a lot of people to work. A lot of people to work because there was no money. But then uh, we, we, couldn't, we didn't have refrigerator, washing machine, nothing because we didn't have any money and nobody was a manufacturer. But after the war, they converted the war effort in production into producing household goods, refrigerators and sodas and so forth. You know, I uh, I went to Pearl Harbor. I went with, yeah, and I went. Yeah. It's still amazing to me see the, the to see it and the feeling you get as an American. You know, going taking the boat over to where the ship were sunk, and you still could see the oil coming up from it, and you. Know, it, was it 70 years later? Um, the, the feeling you get, it's still, like, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It was so... Yeah. And I still didn't want to... Yeah. I said, what I want to do is forget about it. Yeah. I want to completely forget about it. Then I realized that here just in the last few years, I realized that was wrong, too. So I'm enjoying it, talking about this it. This generation, the new generation, too, uh, what they call the millennials, I think they want to know about it, but they need people like you to talk about it because we need to understand, helps understand our government too, if you know what happened in the past, because you don't want stuff to repeat. Every time I put on my hat and go anywhere, somebody stops me and thanks me for my service. I, I didn't want to do it before. I didn't want to think about it or talk about it. It would bring up bad memories. But every now, I go out now, I never go without my hat. And every time I go out, something great happens to me. Every time I go, somebody stops me and thanks me for my service. Absolutely. I was in Cox Seafood here a while back, and a guy walked up to me and said, were you, what were you in? I said, Navy. He said, you, did you ever get to Russia? I said, yeah, I got to Russia. And there were war supplies there. He says, well, my, my father was fighting for the Russians, only, and when, they, when the Russians fell, he was already in there. He would, the Russians had him as a prisoner, and then the Germans yeah. got him, and he was still in captivity when they fell, and the Russians liberated him. And the guy walked up to me and, and gave me a hug and thanked me. And then when I walked out to the Cox Seafood store, I said to pay the bill, and he says, your bill's been paid. Oh, wow, that was so nice. <laughs> and it happens to me all the time at Walmart and different places. Yeah, because I'm you know, growing up, you didn't really talk about it. I think um, last few years, probably last five, six years, I really, I mean, I always knew you were war, too, that you're in the Navy, because I've seen the pictures, but to me, you didn't really ever talk, tell us stories. I've noticed lately, that's why I knew you'd probably be willing to do this, you've been talking about it. I mean, I've seen you um, on the Victory ship, you know, doing, when they're, the ship that's in our, in Tampa Bay. Well, well I, your fellow firefighter, when I went to, mm -hmm. with you, <laughs> approached me, wanting to talk about it, and I wanted to hear about them as much as they wanted to hear about me. The other day, I, when I retired, yeah, everyone's interested. Once they're like, "Do you have a World War II grandpa?" I'm like, "Yes, I, I know it's very special. I know what he did was amazing, and I'm lucky he lived through it because I wouldn't be here. So, yeah, especially when you tell me how many ships made it to Russia. Well, it, only 13 ships out of 400 got back. That's just that's a lot of life lost. That is a lot of life lost. Devastating. I mean, I we don't even even the lives that we're losing now. And, the battles that we have or the war going on overseas is still not comparable to the amount of men that we lost back then and how the world, how our America would look horrible, with if horrible. they did live. 
Yeah. The Battle of North Atlantic was the greatest loss of life in any military venture ever made. Greatest loss of life because it mm. kept on going, it kept going on, on and on and on. Yeah. It needed it. it was the infantrymen in the battle, you get there and the battle's over with. There's no more. Yeah. But with the Navy, it, just, it continued. Just continued. So you were saying that one battle went, went on for four or five days before y'all could. Was that actually out in sea or did it go? Yeah, no. It, it, as soon as we, the, the Germans completely controlled the North Atlantic. Yeah. They had they had Finland. Mm -hmm. They had all the lands of the world that joined the North Sea and the, the oceans. And they had their cruisers, battleships, and everything else hid in the forges in the North in Norway to where nobody could get to them. The Air yeah. Force couldn't get them. Nobody could get to them. And they stay in them forges and protect themselves. And then when they want to go out and fight, they come out do whatever they want to do, sink whatever they want to shoot down whatever and go back to the forges. Yeah. So they were protected there and the Germans completely trolled the seas and the J Japanese controlled the whole of the Pacific. The Russians had the North Atlantic. The Russians had a battleship, the Von Turpers, in South America when they caught it and sunk it. So they, they were everywhere worldwide. Wow. I couldn't even imagine being I, a young I was boy. Shocked. I was there. as a kid. I was shocked to find out that the Russians had, had the Germans had complete control of the world, yeah. and Hitler figured with his victory at sea, that, that's what they call the TV show. Mm -hmm. he, he, he could just go ahead and conquer the world, and he come close too. He did. And the only mistake he made, he, if he'd have went ahead and invaded England, it would have been all over with. But he hesitated, and that give us a chance to get all the equipment, and all the ammunition, all the supplies they needed to kick the fannies in Germany. Well, I'm just going to say God and is definitely on our side. Russia, too. It sounded like it was um, a lot of prayers and God yeah, helping out yeah, with that because right. he, so for him hesitating and then us getting the supplies there. Wow. So I think um, we're going to end it here for this episode. We're going to do a part two. I'm coming back next week, and we're because there's just so much to talk about. And uh, absolutely, and, and I can I, get more I'm, good questions. I'm proud to be having a, one of my most successful granddaughters interviewing me. Yeah, well, I'm I'm loving this. <laughs> this is going to be something for the future or for our family too. I'm making it absolutely. so I can give it absolutely. to my kids when they get older, their kids, so they have. And they'll want to know about it. Absolutely, and firsthand, and I'm going to. You know, I would like to ask more questions. You know, you as a boy out there, what you did on the ship, you know, fun stuff. Yeah. Just entertain. And, and, and that right now, <laughs> right now, it's a blessing to go back aboard that ship. I go aboard yeah. that ship. Every gun on that ship, I've fired it many times. Oh, uh, the Victory ship we're talking yeah, about. It's at, in uh, Tampa Bay Harbor, and at, at, at he the, goes dancing the there every once in a while. They have, like, they have functions there for you guys. At, at, and he does tours, right? You do tours there. Yeah. Any, any day I can go aboard that ship and mm. see where I slept on the other ship, see the mm. radio room, see the gun station. That's so awesome. And climb aboard the guns. Yeah. The only trouble they don't have any ammunition for them. <laughs> You're like, darn <laughs> it. Fire pins. Hey, you could be like that movie um, Battleship. You know, those aliens come, bit, um, come down and they actually use an old ship like that and they get World War II veterans to use the ship because they're the only ones that know how to use it. So maybe one day that'll happen and you can get your gun, your ammo back. <laughs> no. I know, I'm just kidding. Do that. All right. We will be back next week, correct? We're going to do this thank, again next thanks week. Thanks for the interview, too. No problem.